Barbara Payton and a young new star, Tony Wright, in this story of a woman's daring enticement of a ring champion. Barbara Payton, as she lures a man to destruction for her own insatiable delight. If you won't do it, I'll do it. We just heard the audio from the trailer for the 1953 film Bad Blonde, starring Barbara Payton. Barbara's story is perhaps Hollywood's most tragic and cruel. It's a cautionary tale about how the movie business can bring you right to the top of the mountain and then put you in the gutter before you know it. Obviously, with a story that dramatic, it's often tempting to dwell exclusively on the last act of Barbara Payton's career. But there's more to Barbara than just a tragedy. There's triumph, too. And that twilight time when her star shone brightly is the focus of a new book on Barbara Payton that is a celebration of her life. It's a story that's uh, familiar to our guest today, author John O'Dowd. The new book is Barbara Payton, A Life in Pictures. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ghosty. Thanks for having me back on. I you, really appreciate it. You're very much welcome. And the last time you were here, we were talking about your audiobook on actress Yvette Vickers. Now you've got this new one. This is your second book on actress Barbara Payton. Yeah, it's a hardcover photo book, 560 pages of photos of Barbara and many people who were in her life. And it's full of uh, quotes and captions and hopefully a lot of interesting photos for people. Well, you and I are roughly around the same age, and we both take an interest in uh, things from the past that perhaps our peers uh, wouldn't be all that interested in. So how did you discover Barbara Payton in in the first place? Well, uh, my introduction to Barbara happened when I was all of seven or eight years old. I was a uh, a film buff even then, even at that young age. Hmm. And I especially loved horror films. And back in those days, there was a TV show on Channel 11, WPIX, here on the East Coast called Chiller Theater. You probably remember it. Of course. And uh, one week, Chiller Theater showed Barbara's horror film, Bride of the Gorilla. That's a memorable title. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I, I happened to, to see it. And I was mesmerized by Barbara's beauty. As soon as I saw her, I, I, I remember it to this day, how I was just transfixed by her uh, appearance in the film. And looking back now, I think some sort of connection took place because she never completely left my consciousness after that. Ride of the Gorilla with Barbara Payton, Lon Chaney, Raymond Burr, and Tom Conway. The dramatic story of a strange curse that brought terror to a man and frenzy to a woman in love. Don't go away. You do love me, don't you? That's all I need to know. We are standing in my way, and Dina's. We love each other. What are you going to do about it? Did you see this animal? Yes, I have seen the animal. It walks in his hind legs. Like a man? No, like a beast that walks like a man. Oh, let's go back, Bonnie, please. I'll never go back. Never. Stop. Go on. Why don't you shoot? You can't miss. And then years later, when I decided to pursue writing um, as a career, I, I had remained a fan of hers, and I had learned a lot more about her life by then, and I decided that I wanted to write about her life. And so that's what I did. I, I began researching her life and her career very 
very seriously researching it, and it took me approximately nine years to research and write the first book. That's interesting, because I think my experience is uh, a little different from yours. I must have seen Bride of the Gorilla as a kid, of course, but I think it was years later reading a film journal and reading about the tragedy of Barbara's life. I think that's how I uh, became aware of her. That's how most people uh, become aware of her life, I think. Right, and then the logical next question is, how did this happen? I mean, it's a very common story that someone goes to Hollywood with a big dream and either it, it doesn't happen for them or worse comes to worse, they, they wind up in the gutter. And, and you know, Barbara's story is a, a, a common story, but a very extreme version of that tragic Hollywood story. And for many, many years, I think Barbara's down period was more or less what she was known for. And I think what you've done with your first book, Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye, and now with this new book, Barbara Payton, A Life in Pictures, is you've refocused the public's perception of Barbara more on her accomplishments rather than the the tragedy that befell her later. Was that part of the goal in, in both of these books? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. I, I think it was an, uh, an unconscious goal of mine. But as I got deeper into this photo book project, um, I, I was uh, more and more interested in showing photos of her, of her private life when she was with uh, you know, her son, whom she later lost, unfortunately, uh, lost custody of, I should say. Right. Uh, and I wanted to put a spotlight on her film career. I mean, it was far from stellar, but she did have a, a good start in films. Um, within two years of her first coming to Hollywood, she was starring in, a, in an A film with James Cagney. Right. And that was more or less unheard of back then for a starlet to move up so quickly. And that was uh, something that became more and more appealing to me as I got deeper into the project, and that was to show that she had a life. She had a, a good life at first. Uh, there were problems in her childhood, but she had a good start in films. And um, I still believe if, you know, if things had had worked out differently for her, she would have been a big star. Now, what do you make of the stuff they're saying about your brother, that he was a mad dog killer? It's a lie. He wasn't. <laughs> they never are. He was railroaded. They framed him. I suppose your brother never did anything wrong in his life. He was wild, yes. He did a lot of silly things. But he never killed anybody. Well, maybe you're right. After all, he quit cold on me. He wouldn't have been hit if he hadn't stopped. Yeah? Maybe he was innocent. He certainly didn't act like a killer. Of course he was innocent. Nobody knew him any better than I did. Why do you think I tried to help him break out? I've never done anything wrong like that before in my life. I'll tell you why. Because he was going crazy up there. He knew he'd been framed. And he was just sitting there brooding about it month after month. If it had gone on much longer, he'd have ended up in an insane asylum. I couldn't stand to look into his face when I'd go up there and visit him. Don't you see, I had to try and help him break out, even if it meant that I went All right, all right, all right. He was innocent. <laughs> innocent as a newborn babe. Go ahead, be jealous. <laughs> be jealous because you're a, a criminal and he wasn't. Jealous? Jealous of that popcorn thief? That yellow pup? <laughs> And she won the respect pretty instantly of, of uh, James Cagney and, and Bill Cagney. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I think Bill Cagney was a bit enamored of her uh, when she filmed Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye with, with James. And uh, it, it did cause some problems between the brothers, between Bill and James. <laughs> um, I'm, 
I'm not sure exactly why. Possibly Barbara's reputation was already, um, you know, questionable by then. Because she was a very wild and rebellious person. And uh, that didn't really fly back then, especially for a woman. Right. She was expected to play ball with the studio system. Exactly. Like Marilyn Monroe and countless others, female and male actors. They were all expected to, you know, play by the rules. She was a rule breaker. She was rebellious and outrageous, and she did as she pleased. And, Some uh, of the photos I really enjoy looking at are the ones where she's at various uh, nightclubs or nights out, yes. and she's wearing face uh, tattoos. Yes, these tattoos on her on her face, which are which it, it, it looks to me, it's like, oh my God, she's the original goth. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she sort yeah. of invented that. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I never thought of that. Put you know, putting it that way, you're right. She's yeah. the original goth. Uh, yes, yeah, she went through a period where she would put tattoos on her face, and they were temporary, of course. And I, I guess she did it to stir people up, to stir things up, and to uh, be noticed and talked about. And I think it's great. That's one of the things that I found fascinating about her, that she did something like that in the 1950s. Yeah, you wouldn't see Virginia Mayo walking around with uh, <laughs> no, you know, I don't face so. tattoos. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she did things like that. She she was a trendsetter, I guess, but she was ahead of her time. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, a film of hers that is probably her most well-known now, only because it's fallen into the public domain, um, mm-hmm. it happens to be a good film, is uh, the film Noir Trapped. And I oh, think yes. that that's the... That image of Barbara from that film as as uh, a film noir femme fatale is, I think, the most uh, famous of her movie images. Yeah, I agree, and she looks absolutely beautiful in that in that film. Uh, she's just stunning. She was twenty one when she filmed that, and she was chosen for the film by the producer, uh, who was one of the Foy brothers right brian foy one of the seven little foys yes his dad i think was um eddie eddie yep so he's the one who chose barbara for the film and she had only been in hollywood less than two years uh and it it was a an independent film it was produced by eagle lion pictures but uh she acquitted herself favorably in the role and i I'm pretty sure that's how she got the the role in Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye the following year. And uh, like you said, it's um, it's a film noir that's still popular today, and it, it's recently been remastered. No cream, sugar. What do you mean, no cream and no sugar? Confusing, yeah. Oh, honey, I'm glad you're back. I like it. I like you, too. Tell me, anybody been prowling around? Cops, I mean, asking questions? No, nobody. Not since I moved out here and changed my name to Laurie Frederick. That's good. You know, we kind of danced around it a little bit, and, and maybe we should, for the benefit of people who aren't too familiar with Barbara Payton's career, she seemed to be on a, a pretty steady and positive career trajectory Yes. And it was her involvement. Well, I was going to say it's her involvement. It's really not. It's Francho Tone and Tom Neal's involvement with her that kind of gets the ball rolling downhill for Barbara. Yes, yeah. that's right. They were two actors who were both in love with Barbara. Uh, Francho Tone was an ex-husband of Joan Crawford's, and he was a, a, a big film star. Uh, I guess he would be considered an an A film star. Sure. And um, Tom Neal was at the other end of the spectrum, although he does have a classic film under his belt in Detour. Wonderful. The uh, 1945 film noir. Uh, That was a huge hit. Well, it wasn't a huge hit when it came out, but over the years it's gained a a tremendous following. Anyway, both these guys were in love with Barbara, and um, unfortunately uh, they had a, a... pretty 
bad fist fight over her, and Tom Neal won. <laughs> Francho <laughs> Tone wound up in the hospital. He he nearly died. He was um, beat up so badly. He, he fell into a coma, and uh, he had you know he had a, a lot of injuries, extensive injuries. And of course, the the brawl made front page news not only here in the states, but uh, from what I've uh, researched and, and learned, the headlines went around the world. Wow. So anyway, it was a black mark on Barbara's uh, reputation, a huge black mark. And uh, her film career, her acting career, never rebounded after that. She, she was blamed as being the cause of the fight. Right. And in essence, I guess she was, because she was seeing both guys at the same time. She couldn't make up her mind which one she loved, and I think she was basically driving both of them crazy with her um, erratic behavior. But as I look at her now, I know Barbara was emotionally ill, yes. probably even at that time, even back then. So I'm not giving her a pass on what on her behavior, but um, I think it helps to look into uh, her life and and try to figure out what caused her to do these things. Absolutely, because in Barbara's time, there were no conversations about mental illness or emotional abuse or sexual abuse. The, the language didn't exist then. It wasn't as simple as, okay, here's a, a disorder you've been diagnosed with, and here's someone you can see. People just looked upon Barbara as, well, she's crazy. Yeah, that's why, you know, it's a shame that she lived in the era in which she did because uh, I don't think, you know, help wasn't readily available. It just wasn't there. There was no understanding of, of different problems like the kind she had. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back with more from author and historian John O'Dowd in just a moment. What do you want? Well, I have to talk to you, Kathy. There's something I want to tell you. There's nothing you have to say that would do any good. Not after what you've done. And I wouldn't want to listen to anything that you might have to say. Probably you want to tell me you're sorry, but you didn't mean what you did. Or perhaps you're going to say it wouldn't happen again. Maybe you want another chance. Or were you going to say that love made you do it? Well, you're not going to say anything to me. Not about love or Bill or what has been or will be or what might have been. Because I'm not going to listen. Because to me, you're as dead as Bill is. More did. Because I'm going to remember him. I've put you out of my heart. Do you hear me? Now leave me alone. Get out of here. Get out. That was Barbara Payton opposite Gregory Peck in a scene from the 1951 film Only the Valiant. We're back talking with our guest today, author John O'Dowd. His new book is Barbara Payton, A Life in Pictures. You know, my favorite series of photos in the book, they're not really glamorous photos, but they're poignant photos. It's a series of photos taken at a press conference that Barbara was giving to announce to the film world that she was ready to come back to work and she had gone through some rough times but she still looked great i thought and as you look at the photos and the way you have them organized in the book you can see that this press conference goes south deteriorated yeah, right yeah yeah because uh, if you notice that the last photo or i guess it's the last two photos show her looking um, dejected because 
actually they um, the reporters that were there began to um, be- began to criticize her, and uh, by the end of the press conference, she was totally dejected, and uh, I guess she wanted out of there. It it backfired. The whole thing backfired on her, and uh, but that her. Uh, her calling the press conference in the first place shows her naivete. Yeah, I don't think she she ever really considered the mess she had made of her career and her life, mostly her life. Um, she thought people had very short memories, and you know she could come back to town and they would welcome her with open arms, and that was far from the case. They they didn't want to know her. That that happened in 1958, the press conference you're referring to. And by then she had been out of films for three years and she was living in Mexico. And um, so she came back to L.A. in 1958 thinking she could start again and there was no chance in hell that, that anyone was going to give her a break. And it's such a shame because, again, considering how her appearance deteriorated uh, over the years... Right. At that point, she looked like she was ready to, and she was in her mind, to step on a movie set the next day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah she looks great. Yeah. She looked totally contemporary for that year. You know, I mean, uh, her hair was, was nice, and she looked beautiful. I mean, she had been abusing herself pretty badly in, the, in those years, but you would never know it by how she looked in those press conference photos. But what's chilling to me is just a few years later, oh. the transformation was incredible. Yes. Without beating around the bush, Barbara was on Skid Row. Yes. Uh, she had become a prostitute. That's right. And she was involved in this book called I Am Not Ashamed. Right. Which really cemented a bad reputation. I don't think she was going into it thinking that, you know, I'm going to burn all the bridges and torch everything. I don't know what she was thinking really getting involved with that book. Yeah, I'm not sure if she thought it would be a springboard to a comeback. I mean, she had to be totally deluded if she thought that because uh, the memoir happened in 1963. Barbara was uh, 34 years old, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, she looked like she was 50, yeah. and uh, she was in horrible shape, horrible, uh, horrible physical condition, um, emotionally and mentally shot. She was addicted to alcohol and uh, using drugs, and it's really sad what happened to her by then. And a man named Leo Guild actually wrote the book, and... Um, what he did was he conducted a series of interviews with Barbara at her um, apartment, and he kind of pieced together a scenario for the book. But he, he kind of filled in a lot of, of parts of the book with his own, with his own spin. Right. So uh, it's questionable how much of that book's material really came from her and how much came from Leo Guild. It's still questionable today. Well, one of the great things about uh, your two books, and now this new one, uh, Barbara Payton, A Life in Pictures, uh, which is published by Bear Manor, again, you've put the focus back on Barbara at her best. Well, thank you. I searched high and low for many years for these photos. And, you know, obviously they came at a price. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, this is the most, in terms of a photo book, Uh, And I have many, many big coffee table books on a variety of of movie topics. And uh, I have many, many books on Marilyn Monroe that are like this, or or Grace Kelly, or uh, Anne Margaret. I I can only imagine what the audience must think of me. But I I have all of these books by all of these classic actresses. But I will say that this one is hands down the most sumptuous that's the best word i can think of it's a Thank sumptuous you. overview of barbara payton captured in photos and just finding all of these photos because she's not like a grace kelly 
where there's a lot of reference material where you could find, you know, all the photos taken on this day, That's right. you know, for this photo shoot, for this film and all that. And you're dealing with films, you know, some of them are not A pictures. A lot so, of them weren't. Yeah, get, getting this material had to be incredibly difficult. And then curating it had to be difficult. Oh, absolutely. And the way I'm looking at the book lately is it's not a coffee table book it's the coffee table right yeah exactly i mean it's as big as a cinder block yeah <laughs> it is but i i really wanted to give something worthwhile to her fans and to people who like classic film and so that's why you know i kind of went all out on it um i wanted it to be memorable for people and like you said she wasn't as well known as the other people you mentioned so the photos were diff- a lot of the photos were very difficult to come by. I really had to do a lot of digging. I didn't only dig here; I dug in archives um, overseas in England. Wow! And uh, yeah, so I-, I was just determined to find the the most um, evocative photos of her that I could find, and uh, hopefully the you know the readers will will enjoy all of them, and they. As you can see, they run the gamut. I mean, there sure. are photos from her films, uh, portrait stills, uh, candid photos. To tell you the truth, the candid photos are always my favorite uh, because they show the real person. Right. I kind of look at this book, well, not kind of. I do look at this book as a companion book to right. the first one because obviously I couldn't tell Barbara's complete story in this photo book. So I'm hoping that People who don't have the first book, if they if they get this one and they enjoy it, that they'll they'll want to seek out the biography. But I did make an effort to um, to make the ca- the photo captions as descriptive as possible. So where could people go, John, if they were so inclined to <laughs> uh, to uh, get the book or at least see it for themselves? Or if they need a doorstop or <laughs> a cinder block. Right, they want to throw something at someone. Down. <laughs> uh, at Amazon. It's at Amazon.com and also at the publisher's website, uh, BearManorMedia.com. I think those are the only two places right now where the book can be purchased. Hopefully, you know, there will, there will be more places in the future. It just came out in January. Right. So it's, it's still new relatively you know relatively recent book and again just a, a a great job and it's a story that uh it it's a story that needed uh an authoritative tone and that's what you've given it so um not an authoritative franco tone but an authoritative <laughs> wow very good <laughs> an authoritative tone that, no, that no pun intended show. I made it right there. <laughs> there you go. Well, John, I want to I want to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Barbara Payton certainly had a uh, fascinating life that's been rescued from the ashes uh, through your efforts. So thank we, you, Ghosty. We appreciate thank you for everything you've done to help support my work. I really appreciate it. Well, it's work worth supporting. 